I would recommend that you watch a, or the whole video just because, you know, I'll try to put little snippets in all the way through and get, try to get better at telling a story. That's ultimately why I want to do the weekly updates so that I can learn how to tell a story better through the video format. This is how to build a dream. In a world where he is faced with complex medical issues, one man is forced to redefine himself. He has plans, plans to get healthy, plans to live, learn, grow, and love. He created a YouTube channel about doing things he enjoys and are good for his mind, body, and spirit. He dreams of becoming an actor someday, but also a better human being in the process. This YouTube channel is about positivity. He has big plans, but for now, it's all about things that make him happy. This is how to build a dream. Welcome back to the dream. We are on our way to Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, to visit Stacy's family. We're going down, I'm gonna give her dad, Ken, uh, some help, or he's gonna help me by teaching me uh, how to cut up his firewood that he got delivered. So he got some logs delivered. We're gonna we're gonna block it up for his firewood for the winter. I'm done midterms. Uh, Stacy's family came down, her parents and her aunt came down yeah. to visit us. We had a great visit with them. We resurrected Bobby Blue. We, well, yeah, we say we. Uh, <laughs> Ken, Stacy's father, um, was was kind enough to to uh, get Bobby Blue going for us. We got the 1986 Honda, or sorry, Honda Yamaha uh, Moto Four that we have uh, that was passed down actually from Stacy's aunt who visited with us. Uh, got it going for us. to have is, is a weekly update once a week say on Saturday or something you might have to bear with me if I'm having a rough week I might not get it out uh, but I would like to aim to try to have a video out at least once a week but you also might see in addition to the weekly update you might see um, like a feature video you know sometimes I might just want to put out an extra a, a little uh, nugget for you guys like a, a you know, an extra bonus video. Yeah. So we're, we're actually driving to um, Bridgewater, but we're taking a little bit of a detour. So normally it would take about three hours to drive from Anaganish to, to Bridgewater. Uh, Anaganish is, is where we live right now. And uh, Stacy's parents are in Bridgewater. That's where Stacy grew up. And Branch people. It would take about three hours. We would normally go a different 
great than what we're doing today. Today we're taking a detour and we're actually going to a place called Peggy's Cove. It, it's a gorgeous place and it's right on the water and we're going to have uh, what'll probably be like a late lunch, early supper. And it's uh, a place called Shaw's Landing and it's one of my favorite places to eat in Nova Scotia. Drop it.
Take What are you doing? You want to visit him? That's what they say. <laughs> so, here comes the boss here. Break time? Break time. McDonald? What are you doing? Working hard? Trying to. <laughs> or hardly working. Sure. Staying hydrated?
hard one for them to do. Oh, I, was, down. I was a day for a long time. Thank you. He said, <laughs> says, I just want to be everyone's friend, which makes yeah. it really complicated. <laughs> Come on! He's giving you a workout. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tink. Yeah, cool. Just on our way back home from a wonderful trip to the Dix's house. Dix I, Dix Dixitis, Dixoramas. Branch people. The the branch people. Dix being uh, Stacy's family. That's my chauffeur, Stacy. She's driving us home. We had a fantastic weekend. We played uh, Monopoly Deal, which is a card game. You should try it. It's awesome. It's uh, all the best parts of Monopoly. We got to see Stacy's family. Stacy's aunt was there. Her parents. We got to see her baby nephew. We got to see her brother. And we got to see who else? My sister. And her sister and her kids. And Andy, Stacy's sister's significant other. He's also like my boyfriend, so whatever. 
But Andy also has a YouTube channel called Papa's Stuff. P-A-P-P-A apostrophe S space S-T-U-F-F. Go check it out. It's very talented if you like uh, puppets, puppeteering. I don't know what it's called. Uh, but he's, he's very, very, very talented. Also, one of my best friends, Kevin Smith, also has a YouTube channel. His channel is also very, very, very good. If you like cars, especially hot rods, you need to check out his channel. He does a lot of hot rod type of content, uh, but it's called Good Old Garage. Good old garage, good old garage, eh? And, but it is G O O D A L L space G A R A G E. Good old garage. Go check it out if you're into hot rods at all, or you like car stuff, or you like building cars. Anyways, I was just gonna leave it to the next day, today. But I could handle it, could not handle it. So I went, put them all in the correct order. I wish I would have filmed it. Oh, turn the key, boom, fired up right away. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Holy shit, yeah. 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 I was shaking so much. My hands taking that little video was just vibrating. At first fire, oh, and everything, oil pressure, boom. Everything was just perfect.
water bottles here I come. <laughs> Tika, come here. Hey, no, baby girl. Mm. Are you a good girl? Mm? Anything you want to say to all the subscribers? Hello? Can I speak to how to build the dream subscribers, please? Thank you for subscribing. Hey. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I'm sorry. I hope I won't get them all worked up. It's alright, thanks. I'm just kind of snacky. Yeah? Yeah.
18 divided by eight two and would and be eight. eight. Yeah, no eight. Yeah, eight and a half. Sorry. Perfect. So. so you're just notching. Yeah, just so I know where to cut. Okay, so it's, I have to cut it off before the barbed wire there, and right up into the barbed wire at 17 feet, so I'm going to cut it at eight and a half, which actually works out pretty perfectly, as long as the wood is good all the way up to there, but if not, I might get some decent stuff out of it, we'll see, or some like shorter stuff out of it, I don't know if it looks a little rotten down towards that end, like, mm -hmm the base of the tree so we'll see what we actually get out of it yeah this is probably in the middle we already cut a nine foot off of it so it's about 17 and a half so like we'll call it mm, maybe 16 usable okay. somewhere around there 15 16 usable but it's a 17 and a half diameter tree in the middle so this is, I would say, about half of the tree. I already took a nine foot chunk out of it. or 17 feet here. And then there's the tip of the tree is up on that side of the road. So. Hello my love, you're doing an amazing job with Giganto Tree. 
And I just wanted to pop in and say that I love you and I love hanging outside with you and working on the tree stuff. I'm excited to see how you make this weekly update look because it's been a pretty good week so far. Love you. Guess who's back? Back again. This is the first time you've used this one? This bar and chain, yeah. Nice. You don't really get uh, trees this big normally around here. So this tree came down in Hurricane Fiona. It knocked uh, a couple of trees down on our property, or the property of our landlords. This was one of them, so. So this is a 24 inch bar, so it should be plenty big for this tree. And just so it could cut all the way through? Yeah, so the last time, you can see on one of my other videos, um, it was just a little bit shy. It gets dangerous, like especially where I don't really know what I'm doing. Like some, some people are really skilled at this sort of stuff and can make that 16 18 inch bar do a lot of good stuff but where i'm not as skilled not as knowledgeable i would rather go with the 24 inch bar and uh, be a little safer what i'm going to do is cut from this side and i'll cut halfway up and then just watch it because it could go anywhere <laughs> So there's a couple of different schools of thought. Some people swear by wedges. Some people will cut down part way on the top and then cut from the same place in the bottom and come up. I'm not that skilled. So we're gonna go with wedges and see how it works and try it out and see how I like it. Hopefully no one gets injured. Clean cut. Look healthy? Oh yeah. 
That's good. You I think. Get the out of that. What do I know about it? But like, I think when you did it that way, as opposed to when you cut the other one, it's more like smooth and in line. Because oh, sometimes yeah. when you cut down and then cut up, like yeah. it's hard to line it up. So what I do with the last one, which she's referring to, is first of all I had. I can't remember if it was an 18 inch or a 16 inch fire. And even with this 24, you could tell there's not much on the other side. I tried to catch just the tip of the... Perfect. So it wasn't enough to go all the way through. And then obviously like there was a little bit of a barber chair that happened, um, which I didn't know you can happen from a tree that's just laying like this, but obviously it can. A um, barber chair? Yeah, so when the tree breaks, wrongly and it's it can actually be dangerous and it breaks off but kind of kind of springs up the other way and it they call it a barber chair because it when after it's done breaking it looks like a barber chair but they can be really dangerous and there's a lot of force thrown at wherever it's going basically from what i you know watched online from videos and talked to people that know what they're doing you can start a cut at like one side and then come from the other side in the same line and come up and that'll give it a nice clean break um, and it's a lot safer or there's, uh, there's one where you do a cut and then just move over a little bit and cut up beside it or you can do what I did which is cut down wedge it cut down a little further make sure the wedges are all the way in or as, in as far as they'll go and then just keep working it down but anytime you're cutting trees it's it can be dangerous so luckily Nobody got hurt, nothing got damaged. It was a nice clean cut. It's a, it looks perfect. I didn't mess up the tree, which is nice because we're gonna use this for lumber. The other one that she's talking about, I, I messed up and it's uh, not gonna be as good on one part of the tree, but it, it actually was good because nobody got injured and it didn't actually ruin much of the tree. I think the part that Barber chaired a little bit, it split where I'm gonna be cutting it off anyway. Yeah, so, like the bark. Yeah. We have a wire right here. And this is a tip of a wire. And yeah, I tried to pull one back, but we got a wire that goes down here. That branch isn't connected. Okay, nothing else on this side. I got lots of room on both sides. I think I'm gonna cut from that side. So this wire goes all the way down, you can tell like it was wrapped around the tree. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can tell on that stump, but you can see all this. You this all wire. Glue into it here. Yeah. So it's probably why it was a little weaker towards the bottom. Yeah, and just look how the tree split when it fell. Yeah. Like that's going into the root system. None of this is wire. This is all. Some branches. And the cut line is right here. So we should be okay. It looks good. Yep. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
couple of things that happen. One, that little uh, branch on this side from another tree that I was using kind of as protection so that it wouldn't roll crazy in case I was on that side. Mm -hmm. um, that's what hung it up at the bottom but it was cut all the way through which is great because oh. this did exactly what I wanted it to. Propped it up. Yeah, it was just a safety barrier. Cool. And then this part, I don't know if you can tell if Stacy can get in there, but all this is rotten. Oh. So that's why this chunk gotcha. came out. But all that is split and rotten, just from when it fell during the storm, probably. And then you can see where I made that second cut, um, and that's just inexperience on my part. Um, but the bar wasn't actually quite long enough, even with the 24 inch bar. So. But we got a cut, good. everybody's safe, nothing got destroyed. <laughs>
How big? 20 feet. Wow. Two tens? Can right. you do two tens? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If we do tens and we have to cut off, then you can still two, have it. We still get eights. True. So, this bar is pretty excessive for this, but I'm too lazy to change it. You good? Yeah, gives you good reach. <laughs>
Mr. Beast was on a podcast, and I forget which podcast it was, but he threw out this idea for what he thinks would be a good YouTube channel. And basically, you buy a scratch ticket or a lottery ticket, and you play it, scratch it, and with the money that you get from AdSense or whatever from that YouTube channel, you reinvest it into more lottery tickets or more scratch tickets and you just keep playing, keep playing, keep playing until you win. And he thinks that not only would it be a successful YouTube channel, but that you could actually win the lottery. So I'm not much of a lottery player. So the I don't have any interest in, in making a YouTube channel specifically about that. But I did think it was kind of a fun, unique idea. And he kind of gave approval to use his idea on, on the podcast. He put it out there to everybody. So what I'm going to do is, is take him up on that offer, use his idea, uh, but not for a specific YouTube channel. What I would like to try to do is at the end of every video, I'd like to give you a little bonus and you can watch me scratch a lottery ticket. So I chose Lucky 7 because it reminds me of my grand aunt and she was pretty big into the, the scratch tickets and she used to always get Lucky 7s. Lucky 7s or triple 7s, something like that. So when I saw this, I was like, well, now I gotta do it. So we're gonna play. I'll read you this. It says two ways to win. One, you find three identical prizes and win that prize. Two is find and win. So if you found a seven, you win $7. If you find a 77, you win $77. 777, you win $777. Four sevens, you win $7,777. So why don't you scratch with me? So like I said, I don't normally play the lottery at all, and I, I definitely don't buy scratch tickets very often. I can probably count on one hand how many times I've played in my life. So why don't we play together, and any money that I win, I'll reinvest into the channel. So we didn't win, but we had fun playing and come back next week and we'll play again. We'll scratch again.